Guns Don't Kill People, Mario Van Peebles. Solo is a 1986 sci-fi action movie from director Norberto Barba. The movie opens with General Haynes introducing Solo, a new breed of android warrior built by the government. No guilt, no worries, no medical benefits. No one will cry when Solo is gone. Solo costs two billion dollars. I'm pretty sure someone would cry. For his first mission, he's being sent with a squad to destroy an airstrip in Nicaragua. He's a robot. Why is he wearing a hat? Solo takes time out of his busy mission to play with a gigantic spider. He's planting explosives on the cliff wall by the landing strip. Let's cover the soldiers in camouflage, but do nothing to conceal the giant polished silver backpack. Solo sees some women and children, so he begins to disarm the bombs. Hold on, so now it's camouflaged? Realizing Solo grew a conscience, somehow, I have no idea, Colonel Madden blows up the airstrip. Knock knock, who's there? America, motherfucker. The Contras attack and the team escapes. Somehow Solo makes it to the helicopter without a scratch, or dirt for that matter, back at the military base. So not only did Solo survive the massive explosion without a scratch, but he saved the spider as well? Solo's talking to Dr. Bill, the scientist who programmed him. All right, let's take a look at this. See what we got. Come here, baby. Woo, that's some nasty stuff. Geez. Okay, so he was damaged after all. He had to put on these gigantic glasses to see the gaping hole? Solo's power generator was damaged, so he has to switch to backup. Solo needs to transfer his mission data, so he plugs in a stereo cable and puts his hand on a giant Mentos. Solo's under review for not following orders. Colonel Madden doesn't like Solo because he isn't a killing machine. He finds out they're shutting him down, so he follows his directives, which includes self-preservation. Unplug the damn thing! He steals a helicopter to escape, and Colonel Madden goes after him. Go find him. Bring him back here before somebody else gets their hands on him. My pleasure. In one piece, Colonel. A minute ago it was bring him back in one piece, and now it's blow him out of the sky? You can't just blow him out of the sky. It wasn't designed to sustain that kind of abuse. Solo crashes the helicopter into a mountain, but jumped out at the last minute to avoid being blown up. Oh man, why did I eat those mushrooms? Solo finds some ruins and goes inside to hide. While in there, he has a flashback to when he was first built. All right, buddy, it's time to pick a face. What if my face wasn't on TV every other second? What if I was just the basketball player? Mike, Mike. He wants to look like Mike, but instead they made him look like Mario Van Peebles. Can you imagine if they did make him look like Michael Jordan? A bunch of people freaking out, telling everyone that a robot basketball player just blew up their village. What is that sound? <clears throat> it's, uh, it's, uh, laughter. It just means I thought something was funny, you know, like a joke. Define joke. Uh, well, a joke is, uh... Battlefield Earth. Why is he in Darth Vader's control center? The Contras are forcing the villagers to rebuild the destroyed airstrip. One of the kids from the village wanders off and finds Solo. He saves the kid from a rubber snake, and he takes off. He returns that night with the rest of the village. They think he's dead, so they take him back to the village and draw funny, surprised eyebrows on him. Uh... The soldiers show up and he fights them off. They start to realize that something's different about him. They didn't notice that he weighed about a ton when they moved him out of the temple? Or maybe the gaping metal wound in his side? Solo takes apart the TV to repair himself. Thanks a lot, jerk. You just ruined movie night. So this is a billion dollar piece of technology that can be repaired with old TV parts. Solo makes a deal with the villagers. You will provide me with electricity. I will show you how to defend yourselves. Cue the warfare training montage. So none of the Contras have returned yet? The Colonel calls in his personal squad to go after Solo. Merv Griffin? The hottest girl in the village, Aguila, shows Solo the tunnels underneath the buildings. If you take this exchange and add some softer music to it, it sounds like it belongs in Twilight. You must have some brain in that head of yours, Solo. My brain is not in my head. My brain is here. 
If your brain is in your chest, then where's your heart? I have no heart. Now I'm a fat house cat, person my soul. What seems like several weeks later, the militia returns. The villagers use what Solo taught them to fight off the Contra. The military sees the explosions, so they send the colonel's team to go and recover Solo. Dr. Bill goes along to help them find him. The Contras kill some of the villagers, and will kill more unless they give up Solo. They have to give them the rowboat? They killed our people. We have to give them the robot. Solo decides to leave the village. For luck. For luck, have my old do-rag. Welcome to the jungle. We've got fun in games. The colonel sends Solo a message that they'll kill Dr. Bill if he doesn't give himself up. Why is he using a Klingon dagger? Solo rescues Dr. Bill and gets away. Well, that didn't exactly go as he planned. <sighs> oh, my pocket. <laughs> I don't think now is the time to play pocket fisherman. Dr. Bill brought Solo a new power chip so he can operate at full capacity. Then he dies. The Colonel joins up with the Contras to go after Solo. The militia's taken the whole town hostage because I guess they suddenly forgot how to fight? Solo attacks and starts to take out the bad guys, Sam Fisher style. They blow up the church but the villagers escape into the tunnels underground. The Colonel's firing explosive rounds at Solo and this is the greatest part of the entire movie. I guess gymnastics are the only way to avoid being blown up. Solo rescues the kid and stops the colonel. Think about it, Solo! How's that gonna make you feel if you kill me? Good question. Let's find out. Ah! <laughs> That's pretty badass. Just when everything seems okay, the military drops off Solo 2.0. Only this time it's a souped up version of the colonel. Looks like he borrowed that outfit from Rob Halford. 2.0 and Solo battle it out. Your design is flawed. I am the model for the next generation. The Pepsi generation? 2.0 gets the upper hand, but Solo bluffs him. You are malprogrammed. Psych! Ugh, I'll bet they were hoping Psych would be the next Asta La Vista baby. Solo knocks down the temple, trapping them both. You're both gone. <laughs> Two billion dollars down the crapper. Your tax dollars at work. Solo's still alive, of course, and has a laugh that will haunt this kid's nightmares. Solo was filmed mostly in Puerto Vallarta, Mexico for about $19 million. The movie is loosely based on the novel Weapon by Robert Mason. Solo's appearance in the novel was more robotic, and there was never a 2.0 version. The movie did one of my personal pet peeves. It was released around the same time as Independence Day, and in the trailers, it called out Independence Day, saying Solo was better, more explosive, and so on. If a movie's good enough, it should be able to stand on its own. It shouldn't try to piggyback the success of another. It's not the movie's fault, I just blame a lazy marketing department for this one. Director Norberto Barba only has one other movie to his credit, Blue Tiger with Virginia Madsen. While his movie directing career didn't take off, he's done much better producing and directing TV shows like Law & Order Criminal Intent and Grimm. Adrian Brody had a small part as Dr. Bill, which was one of his earlier roles. Awesome old school actor Barry Corbin played the general. He didn't have a lot to work with and was pretty much the same character he played in War Games. Mary Van Peebles played Solo, and while I liked the guy, he seemed miscast here. He was great in Full Eclipse, New Jack City, and Badass, but he just didn't feel right as the lead for this. He was good, but I think that somebody like Wesley Snipes could have pulled it off better. William Sadler was outstanding as the vicious evil Colonel Madden. This is one of those movies where the villain is better than the hero. He was good as Solo 2.0, but the fun of the character was when he was being ruthless. Lord, I have men in there! Not anymore. First rule when you're dealing with the devil, don't. When he was the robot, he had the cool outfit, but none of the emotion. In the trailer, Solo had a normal voice for when he was picking his look. 
like Mike. But then in the actual movie, they made him sound more robotic, and it was just kind of weird. What if I was just the basketball player? Mike, Mike. The movie occasionally came off like it was dialed back a bit, which makes me wonder if it was filmed to be R-rated, but edited to be PG-13. There's a couple of neck snaps in the movie, but you never actually hear the crack. So when you see the neck twisting, but you don't hear the crack... It doesn't have the same impact. The movie shamelessly borrowed bits and pieces from other films, such as Robocop, Terminator, Short Circuit, Predator, and Universal Soldier. All of these movies are better than Solo. However, it still ended up being an entertaining explosion fest. Solo's the perfect soldier. He's proficient in all types of combat. He has no family, no friends, not even a social security number. If he's wounded beyond repair, we throw him away. That's right. The directive was to destroy that airstrip and eliminate any aggressors that we designate. Now, are we talking the same language here? Oh, yes. Delete, ice, kill, fuck him up, destroy him, wipe him out, terminate. Use your own goddamn voice! Chill. <laughs> 